righty, we are moving right along. It's got a packed show today. Moving on to some questions. So just give me one moment to pull I, them I up. I got them. I got them up. You got them. Go yes. ahead, Phoenix. All right. So the first one that we got was from Caesar at uh, Hey, it's Caesar. Uh, Our friend. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he has a, a three for the E in Caesar. Uh, thanks for the question, Caesar. He asks us, "What is your favorite horror movie before the year 2000?" So it is spooky season. So, uh, Brandon, kick us off. <clears throat> Who do you think is your Ooh. favorite horror movie before the year 2000? A I want to say it's after 2000. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of a lot of goes before 2002. I'd like to see The Exorcist, but based mm. on nostalgia, I just want to say also John Carpenter's Halloween, 1978. Nice. nice. Definitely John Carpenter's Halloween. Um, I feel like that's like the epitome of a horror film. Like if you think horror and slasher, you instantly think of either Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, or Michael Myers. And I personally think Michael Myers. So John Carpenter's Halloween, just the shot framing and certain things, just you you create a you create a man who is who they call him the boogeyman. And he's unkillable. He is, like, don't get me wrong, I hate the sequels. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm really glad Halloween 2018 brought it back. Um, but, yeah, he's just unkillable. He is, he doesn't talk. He's just out for blood, and I love it. So, definitely John Carpenter's Halloween. That is coming up on my watch list, and I'm so excited. Uh, KJ, what about you? You got a favorite horror movie before the year 2000? Uh, I think I'm going to have to second Brandon on this one. Um, <laughs> and But a little fun movie that I like from uh, before 2000 was Dracula. I don't know, my mom, that was my mom's favorite movie, 1931. Uh, wow. So my great-grandma got <laughs> my mom into it, and my mom made us watch it every <laughs> year as well. So I, I don't know, it just has like a special like place in my heart for that reason, but... Besides that, Halloween and Dracula would be my two for sure. Dope. Nathan, what about you? I'm going to go with a movie that's not necessarily the first thing you think about when you think of horror because you think of like slashers and, you know, just this crazy paranormal stuff. Um, but it says it's a horror movie on Letterboxd because, you know, Letterboxd is never wrong about anything. <laughs> um you know, like Chadwick Boseman being the star of the Five Bloods, <laughs> but um, gonna go with Silence of the Lambs. Um, nice. I think that's a that's a good little thriller, good little drama. Sure, there's some horror aspects as well. I think Anthony Hopkins delivers probably one of the best performances I've ever seen. Um, that's just a great little movie. It's a really good one. It's a Best uh, Picture winner, I believe. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm going with a movie that still scars me to this day. <laughs> Uh, and that is the original Candyman. Uh, Tony Todd as Candyman is the one of the most frightening villains I think I've ever seen in a horror movie. I tried watching this movie again like a few months ago, and it was dark, and I couldn't do it. So, yeah, no. Uh, definitely my favorite, and also probably one of the hardest ones to, to watch because it just terrifies me as a kid. And no one should ever say Candyman in the mirror five times. I, I, it's a bad idea. All right. <laughs> so our next question comes from Alejandra. And she is at Alexa Loves. That's L-O-V-S on Twitter. And she asks us, should the Oscars still go on this year? Nathan, what do you think? Yes, they should. Um, you know, it is a down year for movies. Absolutely. A lot of things are being pushed, but at the end of the day, you have to credit everyone involved with the production of movies. I know we talk all the time about the people in front of the camera that we see on the screen. We talk about the directors and we'll sometimes talk about the right, but there are hundreds of people on each movie set. When you get to bigger movies, there's thousands of people on a movie set. These are these people's lives. These are these people's salaries. Um, they deserve it too. You know, I'm obviously a huge sports fan. People say the same thing. Should there even be an MVP this season? Well, yeah, they play, they're play. they playing the sport. There should be. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. Of course, I think this best picture winner, whatever it may be, Tenet. is going to have an asterisk. God, no. <laughs> is going to have an, an asterisk next to it. Maybe some people still think it's, it's a weaker year. But at the end of the day, like, 
it, it, it should still happen. Absolutely. You can't be putting out these movies and it, it, it just wouldn't be fair. It just wouldn't be fair. What, what would these 2020 releases do? Would they be pushed to 2021? Would just nothing win? I, I, I just don't think that's very fair. I, yeah. I personally think it's going to be tough for an Oscar season this year because of how many films are getting pushed back to 2021. And then also, like, what we've had, 10 films in the theater? Onward, Tenet, Invisible Man, Birds of Prey. Yeah, um, there's a lot of others, but, like, these are the main... Yeah, mutants, Sonic, Sad Boys for Life, yeah. <laughs> but, like, the, the, there's just, like, there's not enough films to go off of. Like, you'd have to dip into the streaming service stuff. Uh, like, I think they'd yeah. be forced to. Yeah. Unless you want... unless. Unless you want Tenet to win Best Picture, which I think it should. <laughs> KJ, what do you think? Um, I most definitely think that they should still go on with it. Um, similar point to what Nathan brought up. If they're releasing it, I feel like they should definitely be awarded for what they're doing. Um, people are putting their time, their money, their effort into a very difficult time. I have to just say, oh, forget about it or oh, better luck next year, like just moving it back where people will have more time and on their hands to create, I don't know, maybe better movies or at least have more time to fix their movies. I just feel like that's unfair to the people that are entertaining us at this point in time. Um, so I believe it should go on. And I don't necessarily think that it should be an asterisk next to it either. Yeah, I, I agree that it should go on. I think, I think the asterisk comes when it, when, it, when it particularly comes to best picture because, you know, it's not a lot of competition this year, but I sit up there and I'm one of the people who like, you know, I, I love the technical awards more than anything. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like, I want to see, you know, what wins costume design or, or what wins production design. I want to see, you know, who wins editing. Uh, and to me, those matter just as much as best picture. So best picture might be, you know, a little bit of a downer, but eh, you've also picked the wrong best picture winner several other years. So what would it hurt? So, <laughs> yeah, I think we're all in pretty much agreement. The Oscars should go on. They'll probably be virtual, which will suck, but definitely they should. Thanks, uh, Alejandra, for the question. Uh, we have another question from VHUS podcast. Uh, they are at VHUS underscore podcast on Twitter. Thanks again for the question, guys. And uh, this is a question I do not <laughs> understand the reference. Maybe you guys will. Uh, they said they ask us, "Where's Rachel?" And uh, I'm not sure if that's a Friends reference or what. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Who's Rachel? Uh, I got a better question. Why is Rachel? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh. So v <laughs> VHUS podcast, thanks so much for asking us a question. Uh, great podcast. Check them guys out if you have the chance. We also got one more question from Hentai Hero. Uh, and they are at Gaggeth, that is G-A-G-G-E-T-H at on Twitter. And they ask us uh, two questions, most overrated comedy and most underrated comedy. They throw in that their overrated would be Step Brothers and their underrated would be Game Night. So what about you guys? What is an overrated and underrated comedy for you? Definitely Jack and Jill for underrated. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you so much. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, um overrated, I'd have to say long shot. Um I I hated that movie so much. Disrespect. Hated. <laughs> um that, but underrated for me, um, Sausage Party. I don't see. People, I don't. I I saw that film in theaters. It was freaking hilarious. Um, I don't see. Much, I don't see a lot of people talking about it nowadays. And it's definitely underrated. Um, you. I never expected to see food wanting to leave the store, like, and then they get all excited, and then they just get absolutely murdered when they're getting cooked. It's so funny. <laughs> so it's definitely Sausage Party. AJ, um, yeah. my underrated ones will have to be the bad boy movies. All of them, mm. honestly, mm. they're all hilarious. Um, and I don't think they get enough credit in that uh, or enough credit in general. Mm -hmm. Overrated, I'm going to go with them. Um, Step Brothers, I've seen that. 
about three times. One of my friends, that's her favorite movie. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> we watched it on her birthday for the past two years. And oh. I've seen that movie. Um, I'm so so sorry. that's my overrated for sure. So they know what they're talking about. <laughs> Nathan, what about you, Ben? Yeah, I'm going to go with a tad different direction, but still stay on the same road as these guys. I think a very overrated movie is another Will Ferrell comedy. Going to go with the anchor man. Um, watch, wow. this for the, watch this for the first time over the summer. And I just, I think all Will Ferrell movies are pretty much the same. Um, he always acts like he's a child inside a man's body. <laughs> and that might be funny to me once. And then it's run its course. Um, I didn't find Anchor Man. I love Steve Carell. I'm a huge Steve Carell and did not find him funny. Well, he was the only reason that movie was funny at all. Um, so Anchor Man's overrated, in my opinion. Underrated, I'm gonna go with something that frequent listeners of this show know that I love, and that's the disaster artist. Mm. Uh, I think James Franco is just absolutely hilarious in this role, making a movie about how the room's made. It was just so much fun, so funny. Um, I think it's probably the highest comedy rate, highest rated comedy film for me personally. I don't know if I phrased that right, but you get the idea. So that's it for me. Now, uh, Nathan, I could ask you a question. Do you yes. Think Will Ferrell is an overrated comedian in general. Yes, absolutely. Okay. We're on the same page. I was just, I was just, I make- just, I'm sure he's got the talent, like, <laughs> but he just, he needs to stop playing the same character he needs to stop playing the child inside the man and i saw talladega nights a long time ago i don't remember it personally i don't Mm -hmm. remember it that well but i remember that is probably going to be my favorite will ferrell comedy that one i can see being like okay this is hilarious but it's the only one but yeah he's he's just got to do something else because i've seen now step brothers the other guys, mm-hmm. Eurovision, <laughs> Anchorman, they're all the same. Like, dude, do something else. Elf is funny. I'm sorry. Elf, Elf is, funny. is funny. Yeah. Okay. That will, yeah. But, yeah. but Elf, and, and for me personally, maybe Talladega Nights. We'll, we'll let that slide. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, what about Blades of Glory? I happen to agree. No, no. Never, never. <laughs> no. Like, I happen to agree. I think Will Ferrell's probably a great actor and um, decent comedian but the movies that he's done like yikes they're they're all awful i can't i can't stand it um but i am going to go with uh two movies one that uh one that th- these two movies get compared to each other a lot but uh for overrated i'm actually going to go with super bad i uh i think this movie gets a lot like way way too much love it's okay it's it's fine it's funny but eh, it's it's a bit it's a bit much for 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 where it is and actually i'm gonna go underrated is book smart i think i think book smart is one of the funniest freaking movies uh definitely of lot of 2019 uh it was a favorite of mine i don't know why these movies get compared to each other i guess because they're you know high school characters in, in you know, the new era or whatever, but I, I just love Booksmart. I think it takes anything from uh, that was done well in Superbad and makes it 10 times better. So for me, overrated is going to be Superbad and underrated is definitely Booksmart. One of the yeah. few times Phoenix and I agree. We both love Booksmart. <laughs> yeah. Booksmart's fantastic. So, How do you guys feel about Dinner for Schmucks? Hate that movie with a burning passion. <laughs> oh man! Hate it Come with on. a burning passion. Never throw seen it. That. Throw it in the flames. It's it's hilarious. No, it is not. <laughs> there is no humor in that movie to be found. All right. So thanks, uh, everyone, once again for all of the questions. Uh, shout out uh, Caesar. Hey, it's Caesar Al on Twitter. Alejandra Alexa loves on Twitter. VHUS podcast and hentai hero at Gagath on Twitter. Thanks, guys, so much. We appreciate the questions. And if you guys want to ask us a question, you can uh, just find us on Twitter at Film Code Pod. We uh, always ask a question before we record. So uh, just uh, look for our We post. always a- ask you questions before yeah. we record. We uh, Before we record. So you guys can uh, send us something that we can answer live. And we'll always shout you out. Yeah.